Hello, Dr. Jane Bogash, expert in health and longevity. And as a, as a practicing chiropractor, I see head trauma somewhat often, between whether it's car accidents, sports accidents, being in the martial arts, certainly jujitsu, kickboxing, boxing, head traumas unfortunately happen. And they have a lot of consequences, one of which is sleep disturbances. And I've covered what to do after head trauma, post-concussive, traumatic brain injury, whatever we want to call it, there are things that we can do to help improve outcomes. And um, that can go from graded exercise. So I think staying, it's pretty consistent that staying active after head trauma is important, even though you need to keep those levels under what brings on symptoms. Things like magnesium can be important, CBD may be a player, uh, managing the gut, probiotics can be a player, uh, fish oils can been shown to help. There's another one that's really pretty potent and that is melatonin. Melatonin is a very potent antioxidant in the brain. We've seen that with other things. We've seen it as far as cancer. We've seen it as far as COVID. It helps control inflammation and it's an antioxidant. It does a lot of different things. So it would make sense that maybe people who have head to head trauma could benefit from taking melatonin. And this was a review. They found nine studies, including 251 participants of people who had sleep disturbances after traumatic brain injury. And they used three different types of melatonin. And why doesn't make any sense. Uh, one was melatonin. The other one was circadian, which is a prescription version. And then, uh, Romelatin, however you want to pronounce it, is another prescription melatonin, or they're, they're agonists, they act like melatonin. <laughs> Why? Melatonin's very inexpensive, the safety margin is very high, the only reason they're doing this is try to patent it and make a profit. Stupid, ridiculous, don't fall for it. Melatonin is one of the cheaper supplements that is available. A month's supply is going to cost you about 10 bucks. A prescription, Lord knows, if they get it patented, hundreds of dollars that your insurance will pay. But hey, at least you didn't have to pay the $10 yourself. So uh, they average in the studies between 2 and 10 milligrams. I think 10 milligrams is definitely too high in most cases. I will usually start somebody in the office out at 0.5 like half a milligram and build them up to maybe three. Occasionally I'll go past that, um, but for sleep disturbances, I usually start lighter. Uh, for traumatic pain injury, we might want to go a little bit higher, but start low. Otherwise you're gonna wake up groggy and um, if you wake up at all, not, not bad wake up, but you're gonna have a hard time waking up, potential nightmares and grogginess. Um, so what did they found? find out of these nine studies, eight of them had a positive outcome, and not just on sleep, but also on mood, on um, other factors associated with TBI. But that makes sense. You're giving an antioxidant that has a it, it, that's at home in the brain and does a lot of good things. So put it on the list of things that you can do to help protect your brain after there's been trauma. Very inexpensive, very safe approach to take for protecting your brain. As always, I'll post a link to this particular study in the description. Make sure you like this video, share it with somebody who you think needs the information, and subscribe to the channel.